Welcome to the Volleyball New Zealand Scorers module. This is a guide on how to complete a 12 sub score sheet. To qualify as a Volleyball New Zealand Scorer, you will have to complete this DVD module and then complete one match as a scorer. You will need to hand in your completed score sheet and then score at least 70% to pass the module. We'll cover the marking of your score sheet later. This presentation will walk you through the basic skills required to complete the 12 sub score sheet. You will move through the different requirements of a scorer and the different sections of the score sheet. Prior to a match starting, a scorer has some pre-match responsibilities. They need to fill in the location, date and time of the match on the score sheet. And also fill in the names of the first and second referees and put their own name down as the scorer. This is found at the bottom of the score sheet. And then if not already pre-printed, they need to record the starting players for each team. As players are warming up, they need to check that their shirt numbers match the numbers recorded on the team roster. This is important because a team can only play players who are listed on the team roster. Name, date and location at the top of the score sheet is the first area the scorer needs to fill out prior to the match. If the match has a match number, fill that in first, followed by the date of the match and the scheduled start time of the match. Fill in where the match is being played and if need be, the court that it's being played on. Don't yet circle whether the team is team A or B, this is done after the toss. The next thing that needs to be filled out is the city, where the match is being played. Then the name of the competition. The name of the first team taking part in the match. And then the name of the second team. And lastly, at the top of the score you need to fill in, if need be, the division the match is being played in and the team who is on duty. And still with pre-match responsibilities, Next we have the team roster. The team roster can be found at the bottom right hand corner of the score sheet. Make sure, as already stated, if this isn't completed, make sure that the coach fills this out for you. Fill in the team name, only three letters will do as an abbreviation, and then make sure all the players' numbers and names are filled out, using a first initial and last name. Fill in the coach's name, assistant coach, trainer, 
medical personnel and manager if need be. And if the first and second referees have taken the toss, make sure the captains sign the score sheet. Remember to circle the captain's playing number in the team list. And then once the captain is signed, ensure the coaches sign the score sheet once the toss has been completed. The last thing you need to do is indicate which team is Team A and which team is Team B. Remember that once this roster has been signed, no changes can be made. We're nearly ready to start. But prior to the hitting warm up, the coaches must have given their starting lineups to the second referee. The second referee will then give the lineup sheet to the scorer to record on the score sheet. Now let's have a look at the lineup sheet. The lineup sheet should look like this or something similar to it. You'll notice on the lineup sheet that there should be six players listed in positions 1 through to 6. The team name should be written down and the coach should have signed the, the lineup sheet. If a team is using a Libero player, they must be listed as well. Prior to transferring the lineup to the score sheet, it is important to check to see if the player numbers are all listed on the team list. Once you have done this, then copy the player numbers onto the score sheet from the lineup sheet. If a player is on the lineup sheet and not the team list, make sure you inform the second referee. Then enter the player numbers onto the score sheet. Start with the bottom right position 1 and go anti-clockwise on the lineup sheet. If a libero is being used, make sure you enter them as well. Then repeat this process for Team B. Then mark an X in the first box of the receiving team, as this player will rotate and not serve. And then enter the actual start time for the match.
When the teams have entered the court and the second referee is checking to ensure the players are standing in the correct positions, it is good practice for the scorer to do the same. This way you will assist the second referee in making sure the players on court all start in the correct positions. If the wrong player is on the court, a coach must use a substitution to ensure that the lineup sheet is correct. Plan number 8 for Team A goes back to serve. Place a tick over the small number 1 in the box under player number 8. This is to confirm that they are the correct server. Team A scores 3 points. Cross off the points using a single stroke as points are scored. Team A lose the serve. The total number of points scored by the serving team to that point in the match are entered into the box below player number 8. In this example, 3 points have been scored, so we enter the total points 3 in the box under player number 8. Cross off the point 1 by team B. Team B then rotate and number 6 goes back to serve. Tick off the small number 1 in the box under player number 6. Team B scores 4 points. Cross off the points using a single stroke. Watch as this process continues between the two sides. It continues like this for the remainder of the set. Remember, in the event of the wrong player going to the service zone, you are to let the player commit the serving fault. Then, notify the second referee of the service error immediately. Substitutions In this example, player number 9 for team B approaches the substitution zone ready to play. The second referee blows the whistle. The first thing that you need to do is check the team roster to see that player number 9 is written down and is eligible to enter the court and play. So check to see if number 9 is listed here and if they are Raise one hand to signal that the player is eligible to enter the court and play. If they're not listed, communicate this to the second referee 
informing them that the substitution is illegal. In this example, plan number 7 is to be replaced by plan number 9 for team B. All you need to do is mark a 9 below plan number 7. Once complete, raise both hands palms facing out to signal that you have completed the substitution and are ready to go on. Plan number 9 is then to be replaced by plan number 8 for team B. After checking plan number 8 is on the team list, you mark an 8 below plan number 9. A reminder that on the 12 sub score sheet, you do not write the score at each substitution. It is also important to remember that a player may only enter one position on the score sheet. In this example, players 7, 8 and 9 may only appear in position 5 throughout this set. It would be an Ill illegal substitution for them to attempt to appear in any other position. The game continues and more subs in the same rotational position are made. Once a player has entered the court three times in a set, they may not enter again. Starting the set is counted as the first entry. Circle the third entrance. This will remind you if this player is subbed off the court, they may not re-enter the set. Here's something you may find helpful. Watch the scorer during the substitution. The scorer has put one hand up to signify that the substitution is legal. They then write it down. And when ready, they put two hands up to say they are happy to go on. Time out. The coach from Team A requests and is granted a timeout. Team A has 21 points, Team B has 16 points. You mark the score under the T, beginning with the score of the team that called the timeout, followed by the opposition score. The set is over. Once the set is over, first fill in the end time as soon as the set's finished. Then mark an hourglass shape in all the points boxes to cross off any unused points and to block any further changes. Circle the last rotation score for each team to block off any changes.
the deciding fifth set. The deciding set works the same as sets 1 to 4. To make things easier, begin by looking at the left side and middle boxes only. There are however some differences. Depending on the task you will have to fill in the team abbreviations, fill in A or B depending on what side of the court the captains choose at the toss prior to the start of the fifth set and enter the start time of the set. For the first eight points of the set, only look at the left part of the sheet exactly as you've done in previous sets. Then, at the switch of courts, fill in the number of points that the left-hand team has scored and copy their starting rotation across. Copy across all information from the left-hand box into the far right-hand side. This doesn't take long, so don't let the match start until you're ready. Then, continue as the previous sets, looking at the right side of the sheet. At the end, remember to fill in the end time. Results At the end of the match, you'll have to ensure this box is completed. It is advisable to complete each line at the end of each set. Start by entering the names of the teams. Then make sure you put in the points won by each team. If a team has won the set, mark a 1 in the W column. If they have not won the set, write in 0. Fill in the number of substitutions used in the S column. If none are used, write 0. Fill in the number of timeouts used in the T column. If none are used, write zero. Then you need to fill in the totals.
fill in the match starting time. Then fill in the match ending time. The match duration is the difference between the start and the end times. Fill in the duration of each set in minutes. Fill in the winner of the match here. Now it is time to sign the score sheet. Captains must not sign the score sheet until this box is complete and the scorers have signed the score sheet. Signatures. The approval box should be filled out prior to the match starting. At the end of the match, after the results box has been completed, the scorer signs the score sheet. Team captains then check and sign the score sheet. Then the second referee checks and signs the score sheet. And last of all, making sure everything's okay, the first referee signs the score sheet. Recording Sanctions When a player, coach or other team member is sanctioned, you must record the information in the sanction box. Team delay sanctions are also recorded here. To mark the team member at fault, use the player's number or C, AC, T or M for other team members in the appropriate box. In the score column, the score of the team who the sanction is being applied to goes first. Here are some examples. Delay warning for team B. Player 4, Team A, receives a yellow card. Coach for Team B, receives a yellow card. Coach Team B, receives a red card. An important point to remember, a point that is scored as a result of a yellow card penalty is recorded by circling the point and not by ticking it off. Remarks The remarks box is used to record information such as protests, a start time which differs from the scheduled start time, and a brief explanation for the delay in the match, 
and any irregularities during the match, for example external interference or equipment malfunctions. Remember, a team member does not have the right to write on the score sheet, other than signing either at the beginning or end of a match. Some hints and tips. After a rally, remember to watch the refs and not the game. For example, Team A may hit a spike out, you fill in the score sheet with Team B winning a point and miss seeing the refs call a touch off the block. Once you have transferred the rotation from the lineup sheet to the score sheet, initial the back of the lineup sheet to show you have finished with it and it can now be given to the second referee. After each set, rip each lineup sheet up. Coaches must provide a new lineup sheet each set. They can't say, same as the last set. It is also best practice that the coaches provide their lineup sheets to the scorer before they cross from one side of the court to the other between sets. If th this doesn't happen, make sure your second referee informs the coaches that that is a responsibility they have. To qualify as a VNZ scorer, you must now make sure your name is on this module's attendance list and complete one match as a scorer. You need to hand in the score sheet and the score sheet is marked by VNZ. You must score at least 70% to pass. The score sheet that you hand in to Volleyball New Zealand will be marked as follows. The match information part of the score sheet, so the time, date, location, venue, etc., is worth 5%. Recording the actual score of the match, the substitutions and timeouts, is worth 50%. Completing the team lineups and pre match signatures is worth 15%. Completing the results box is worth 15%. And finally, completing the remarks, approval, and sanctions part of the score sheet is worth 15%. To pass, you must score 70 out of 100. This concludes the Volleyball New Zealand Scorers Module DVD. If you have any questions in regard to this DVD, please contact your association's referee coordinator. And good luck with completing your score sheets.